Hello people, here's for sale on eBay, uh, my Union Graduate start right lathe. Now I thought I'd better do a video because uh, there's lots of finer details you can't really put into writing or show with photographs, uh, like the running of the thing. So it's got a variable frequency drive and brake resistor. This uh, has been adapted and converted to LED operation on the lamp. So that's an LED lamp. So if something comes flying off the lathe, nothing happens. It's just plastic. So if you want to have a closer look at this drive, it's a Mitsubishi unit. And you might notice something which is a bit special. This thing's on casters. Now this lathe weighs about 250 kilos, comes in two bits. But these casters, they're rated at 200 kilos each. And there's five of them, so that's a ton. So as you can see, I can move the thing just with a finger. Nicely balanced. So if you've got a reasonable workshop floor like this one, nice concrete, uh, you'll be able to move it around where you like. Now, one of the big problems with these lays is Without the casters, if you put it in situ, it's there to stay. You ain't moving it. And dragging it across the room, such heavy cast is not a good idea. So the caster is a great solution. That means you can pull the lathe out from the wall and clean all the chippings and just, just makes a better job of it. Because if you've got a small workshop, you may well want to move this around. Anyway, I'll just move it out so we can have a look at the BFD on the back. Right, so as I said, this is a Mitsubishi unit. Excuse my poor video. In there, that's all the wiring. The wiring down the back of the lathe. Now it's got an almighty thick cable, heavy duty, cable and it goes to that type of plug so as you can see it's definitely 240 so this the engine in this thing well let's call it the motor is a three-phase unit now it's a good quality Brook Compton motor and the uh, variable frequency drive is giving it the three phase that it requires off the 240 volts but what it does allow you to do, which the lathe, this original lathe could never do, was have speed control other than the pulleys. So down here, got this. Let's see here. You pull it system. There's a little lever here, just there. If I pull that down like that, the belt. Rises up, lever it, quick change on your belt if you want, I just leave it on that. Actually for most turning, leave it on the fastest speed, do your speed adjustment on the, on the control on the front. It's enough for most jobs. If you want to do some really big heavy duty stuff, just change your things accordingly. Now one thing with these lathes, um, a lot of them were sold just as a straight bowl lathe, so it's just one piece. Now this serial number here corresponds with the stamped serial number there. So, as I said, a lot of these lathes was just sold as this unit here, not the bed. And these were a line during the factory that bed and this head unit was made together made to match so if you do ever want to buy one of these just make sure if it's got a bed on it that the serial numbers line up otherwise you've got a really odd little um, the whole thing just doesn't balance the same that face fitting on here at the factory was made to fit perfectly and some of these things rattle and vibrate when they're not done properly 
I'm just going to show you. So, forward. And there's a the speed. No, just using the hand. You go to full speed just by doing that, which is. Now, with a variable frequency drive and this brake resistor here, what happens if I press stop? It's the equivalent of an electrical reverse thrust. That energy that's been used from it to stop goes back into the system and goes into the brakes. It's like it's putting, um, it's like literally pressing reverse on here. So if I was to go forward like that, slow speed or faster speed, and just press reverse, that's exactly what it's like. So, wonderful thing about the variable frequency drive, you can do that. And having reverse is such a useful thing for sounding. Obviously you don't turn anything in reverse, but if you're going in reverse like that, you can actually sand all those nibs and denib your wood off and then just stop it and go the other way. Very useful. So there's not much else to say about the lathe itself, um, but I did think I was just going to show you something just for a bit of entertainment. A glass of water. Okay. So give you an idea of the balance of the thing. So I'm just going to crack it up full speed let it go. Stop. Yeah, I think that gives you an idea. Now, what's a bit special about this lathe is all this stuff. Now this has got to be the most complete collection of Union Graduate bits and bobs. Regional manual, that's absolutely a rare, rare thing. All the pages, lovely. Now this faceplate is for this side of the lathe, so that's the biggest it can fit. And that's 12 inches. So you can turn 12 inches on this side, on the spindle side. These two fellas, which are 14 inches, are for the bowl turning side, which is this side. I can't put that on because I've only got one hand and holding the camera. So I get they go on that side, so there's two of those. One there, one there. There's some drifts here for knocking in and out your, your dog. So if I put the dog in, like that. If you crack it in and you want to get it out, just put the drift in and then you just tap her out. Very useful. I just want to show you some more about the alignment of this thing. So if I slide this along. Now the locking cam systems on the Union Graduate, you just need a little light on that thing, it ain't going nowhere. Okay, slide this along, power stock. Now look at this. Have a look at that alignment for something that's that old. Perfect. So, and that's something else you don't get if you've um, got one of these beds that wasn't mated up to this originally in the factory. That's what it's all about. So, if you open here, that's your pulleys. And inside here, there's a couple of flats, one here and one here. So you can put your wrench on 
No. One minute. Like that. And it's practice to, if you want to take a faceplate off and it's on there really hard, you just do this. A couple of times. And off it pops. And do the opposite, just take it over, just crack it. Causes absolutely no harm whatsoever. It certainly beats the heck out of backing on these, which people do to try and get them off. So that's the preferred way to take them on and off. Right, now the bits and bobs. So we've got number three Morse tapers. You've got a wonderful keyless chuck there. Uh, another adapter so you can turn your lathe into a buff. Very useful. I've got a collet chuck. This is for the spindle side. Faceplate chuck. Another faceplate chuck. A bell chuck, that's a very rare thing. It's for production work, very rare. The screw chuck. This little beauty is that thread for these. So what you can actually do with this is you can tap out your piece of wood and actually put it straight on the spindle if you so choose to. This is also good for cleaning your threads out. So if I remember correctly, it's six teeth per inch. And that's it. not easy to come by I can tell you uh, other bits and bobs right chisels got some absolute beasts here I better measure that so you, you won't believe me the size of this thing two inch biggest roughing gauge you can probably I don't think you can get a bigger one than that, actually but I tell you what, if you're turning something massive between these centers, that roughing gauge gives you all the power. You just, it's effortless just to take knots off and God knows what on the hardest of timbers. You've got another one, which I think's, um, inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter that one. Right, I'll go into great detail of all these things on eBay. There's more chisels down there. They're actually, it's all high-speed chisels, and they're for um, just grinding up and making shapes yourself. I've got all these, big bowl gouges, small bowl gouges, skew chisels, gosh, you can name it, beading tools. use more half rounds and also if that wasn't enough chisels there's a full box of these fellas mint yeah more chisels you'll ever need so I think that covers the main points, but I just wanted you to see the thing working because there's no way an eBay photographs are going to convey that. And just wanted you to see how well balanced these things are. Okay, happy bidding.